welcome back to The Average Drinker. I'm Dara, I'm your average drinker, and it is time for something awesome. And by awesome, it means the days are getting hotter, right? Summertime, it's hot outside, temperatures are warming up, and sometimes you just want to reach for something that's not quite as, I don't know, hot, I guess, or or higher proof, you're looking for something that's a little bit lower proof or something fruity or lighter. And that's why this is gonna be a video you're gonna wanna watch. This video is going to show you one, two, three, four, five, six. Six easy sipping scotches that you can drink all summer long that are absolutely delicious. I'll tell you what I've got and then I'm gonna actually do a blind of them because I wanna see which one's my favorite and why and just give you an honest perspective on what these taste like to me and why I like them so much. So let's dive into the bottles that we have in this flight. And I'm gonna start off with this one. So we have Highland Park 12 at 86 proof. Then Glen Fittick 12, that one comes in at 80 proof. See, these are nice and low proof. We're starting off well here. Then we have the Brook Lottie, classic Lottie. Oh, love this bottle. Actually, I really enjoy all of these, which is why they're in this flight. But I wanted to see which one finished on top. So, we've got that one. Then we have Glen Morangy. Morangy, Morangy, Morangy. Glen Morangy, or as I like to say, the one in the orange. And this one comes in, why do I always, 86 proof. Then we've got the Macallan 12 year. The double cask, it comes in at 86 proof. And then, Glen, and then, and then, and then, and then, you got the point, right? Then we finally have the Glendronic 12 year. This one is also 86 proof. So we're sitting right around that 80 to 86 proof. Got that, and this is what I'm gonna be drinking in this flight. Now, first of all, I, I gave you guys a weird pause there. So I'm gonna set these bottles to the side, pull the glasses up, Bill already labeled them, poured them, no idea which one is which. So let me just get everything set back up and I'll be right back. I'm actually really, really excited right now. Wow, I feel like I just shouted at you like BAM! And then I was back and I was loud. I'm excited because I actually remember to grab a water this time, which never happens. I usually always forget my water and then I'm like, sorry guys, give me a second, I gotta go get some water. This time I've got water. So I'm excited to see where this flight ends up Six of them, right? I could get pretty jazzed up in here, but at the proof point is a nice, good, easy sipping proof point. These are easy sipping scotches, that's why. Because, I mean, especially if you just want to sit around a campfire during the summer or maybe not something that warm. Maybe if you just want to hang out on the back patio and have a cigar, have, have some scotch, whatever you want to do, I think this is a great flight for that. So before I jump into it, I want to know what you guys would pick out of this flight? Like before you know what I pick, what would be your favorite? Leave it in the comments and then we'll see what happens as the flight continues. Okay, so let's dive in. I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Kinda looks like a cool little curvy thing going on here. Okay, let's dive into glass number one. Glass number one is sweet, honey, Maybe a red apple. Does Definitely does not burn the nose hairs. It's very nice on the nose. It smells delicate, like maybe a little bit of florally. Just reminds me of like you were hanging out in a, smells good. Reminds me if you were like hanging out in a little spring flowery meadow. I don't really think there are a lot of flower meadows here in Colorado, but where you live, if there's like a meadow of flowers and some honeysuckles, that's what this smells like to me. Even like a hint of citrus. Oh yeah, orange peel right there. Yep, orange peel. Smells very nice. Let's take a sip of this one. Mm. It's good. Ah, oh, I really like it actually. So right up front, you get that sweet, orangey, delicious taste that I smelled on the nose, like that orange, honey, sweetness. And then it actually, on the back of the palette, it kind of rolls into a light leathery note. Like leather, maybe a hint of black pepper. Mm. 
I like that. And the flavor just sits there, super easy to drink. It's good. Obviously, it's good, because I said it was good, and this is all good stuff. I don't know why I have to keep telling you it's good, but it's going to be good. Okay, let's move on to glass number two. I'm going to try to be fast at this, since I have six glasses. You guys know I get a little squirrely, a little sidetracked sometimes, and it can take forever. Forever. Not this time. Not going to happen. Mm. I love the orange note that I'm getting out of that first one. That was good. Okay, moving on to glass number two. Oh, wow. That's similar, but not at all, actually. That is super rich compared to the first one. That's rich, like some cherries, French vanilla, honey. Smells syrupy and sweet. It, it's like a richness, a little, like, oaky, oakiness. That smells like heaven in a glass. The nose on this one is like, whoa, baby. Like, holy moly, that smells good. Mmm. That is so good. Compared to that first one, this one actually blows the first one out of the water. Like, this is, it's so rich. It has more complexity. has a little bit more, like, good, better mouthfeel that like it has a good amount of sweetness but it also has like this good amount of like white pepper and like some darker red notes like a red apple red fruit but then mm, even the slightest hint of like char or I don't want to say peat but just a hint of smoke that is very good. That is absolutely delicious. Like I said, that blows the first cup out of the water. Or the first pour out of the water. It is like worlds above. Way good. Not that this first one was bad. It was just kind of mellow compared to that one. And that one was just like, holy moly, that's good. Mm. That's really good. Okay, moving on to glass number three. Oh, and that one's even, even more different than the other two. Okay, this one, I instantly got this note. It smelled like I like French vanilla ice cream. Oh, with like a glazed treat on top of it, like a like a little honeycomb on top. Chocolate. Mmm. Yeah, that smells like French vanilla ice cream in a glass right there. That is delicious, like super thick smelling. Like if you know, okay, actually this is a good example of what this smells like to me. So you know if you like let your ice cream melt down and it's like liquefied but it's still thick and like you can, when you like lick it, it's like thick and sticky on your tongue. That's what this smells like. But then it has some depth to it. It smells very rich. Ah, oh, I like it. I like it a lot on the nose. Okay, let's taste it and see what happens. Huh. So, wow, that was wild. So right up front, I got the taste that I was smelling. That French vanilla, that richness, some of that cherry. And then it was just like, it went to the mid palate and then it just died. Like I can still taste it, but it was like the, fin like the finish just went poof. Like you were waiting for something and then it just, it was dead. It wasn't there. It's like super disappointing because... It tasted really good up front, like on the very front of your palate. I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just saying it was disappointing a little bit. Yeah, it just kind of dies and dries up. Like, that's weird. I don't know. The way that smelled, I was expecting way more, but then the finish was just like super disappointing. Huh. Okay. I don't know. Definitely a lot. See, like, I was thinking on that one when I smelled it, it was going to be really rich and really sweet. And it was up front, but then it just wasn't. Then it was just dry and, like, almost like a light bitterness. Huh, that was weird. Okay, then. All right. That was weird. Moving on to glass number four. Ooh, yeah. This one actually smells slightly similar on the nose. 
to that first one. I mean, not the first one, the last one we just did. Not quite as sweet and not quite as rich on the nose. I do get some of those French vanilla notes. I get a little bit of a floral note, like a spring flower, like a, maybe a rose. And then I also get some like chocolate covered oranges and definitely honey. Definitely honey. It smells, it smells nice. Now let's see what happens when I taste it. Better. So that's what more of what I was expecting out of the last one, but this one stays sweet all the way through. It's not quite as rich on the palate as it is on the nose. It's just kind of like a nice, mellow, creamy mouthfeel, like a creamy orange, definitely much less dry compared to glass number three. Uh, yeah, definitely those that creamy French vanilla, orange chocolate, honey bomb kind of tastes like, but it's a very mild in flavor. Like, and I'm still saying this is sweet and it tastes sweet, but it's not like this over rich depth, if that makes any sense. I'm getting more of a, like, I don't want to call it not like deep, but it's not deep. It just, it's there and it stays there and the flavor stays there. So pretty good overall, not bad. I'm going to move that there. See, this is so far ranking these is actually pretty easy. Like I'm like, okay, first, second, third, fourth. Like it's, it's super easy so far. Got to make sure I keep them in order, especially when I got six of these suckers in front of me. All right, glass number five. Oh baby, we're on to glass number five. Feeling jazzy, feeling alive. Don't know what that was, but here we are. Moving on to glass number five. Mmm. Chocolate, coffee, toffee, vanilla, light molasses. This smells like something it smells like a scotch that bourbon lovers would like. On the nose. On the nose. Like it doesn't give that super malty note on the nose. It smells more of like what you would expect to get out of a bourbon, honestly. Yeah, it smells nice though. It smells super nice. Let's taste it and see what happens. Hmm. See? That's very interesting. So on the nose, I said it didn't smell overly malty, had all these like really delicious like chocolatey, vanilla-y notes, things like that. And then when I taste it on the palate, I actually, it tastes pretty malty to me. Taste the vanillas. Tastes actually pretty thick, good. Um, a little bit of peppercorn in there, like a white peppercorn, not like a dark. Even a hint of like salt. Um, that's good. It is really good and balanced and the finish is nice. It's like a good amount of drying, but also like, like oily. And I, I really like this chocolate orange note that I'm getting in there. Not bad. Not bad at all. That one's moving up a little bit. Okay. That one's going to stay. It's kind of tied in second right now. Definitely. Number two was like worlds above the rest so far. But that one, not so bad. Mm. Okay, glass number six. Sometimes I forget to sit up straight and I'm like, Dara, sit up straight, sit up straight. Mentally, I'm telling myself to, but then I'm just sitting here like, Dara, sit up straight, you little sloucher. Like sometimes I just want to sit here like this. Anyhow, okay. Whoa, holy sweet bomb. That is a sweet bomb on the nose. Smells like a Japanese cherry blossom spray that you get at Bath and Body Works. Do you guys know? I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about, but when I was growing up, I used to love that Japanese cherry blossom like lotion and perfume body spray. That's what this smells like. That was like instant Japanese cherry blossom right away. But also, a little bit of honey, a little bit of vanilla, but definitely Japanese cherry blossom. Like it smells fairly rich not quite as rich as a couple of these whoa applesauce yeah applesauce like the muscle man's applesauce 
It smells very nice. Now, let's see if it tastes very nice. I'm gonna go with yes. Yes, it probably does, because I like all these. Okay. Mmm. That is good. Good thing it doesn't taste like perfume, because I would be sorely disappointed. Oh, that's really good. Right off the bat, that just moved up into second place. That one's really good. It's got a good mouthfeel to it. It tastes like, I get some of those Japanese cherry blossom notes, but I actually more I get, hold on, I gotta take one more sip of this. Hmm. I get more of this, ooh, apple, like a green apple, a deep green apple, very like almost overripe, but not quite overripe. And then this really nice peppery, peppery note comes in on the finish. Oh, that's good. It's like sweet and a peppery and it's balanced and it's delicious citrusy, but fruity, like a, not berries at all. Definitely not berries. Um, tangelos, you know, those little tangelos, it kind of has like a little bit of a tangelo taste. They're like the little tangerine orange thingies. They're tiny little oranges. They're so cute. Anyway, that's what it kind of tastes like. Oh, that's really good. It's like a tangelo orange summer. This is so summery to me with a little bit of peppery that I like on the back end. Mm, that's good. That definitely moves right up there. Ooh, yeah, that moves right up there in a second place. So kind of got these all over the place. But for me right now, the only two that are giving me any kind of controversy just from the first time through was number five and number one. And those are kind of tied in for third place right now. So we'll see what happens the second time through this. I'm going to do it a second time through. If you haven't become a patron yet, become a patron so you can watch the second time through. Otherwise, I'll be back with the final results and we'll see which bottle kind of comes out on top. I'm curious to see what happens here. I liked all of these though. Very, very good. So, all right, stand by for the final results. It's the final countdown. I kind of have my own karaoke over here. Dara, Dariyoki, Daraoki. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, we're back with the final results. And that was crazy because literally my last place one the first time through nearly ended up in first place and that was nuts. But I remember saying that it did, number three didn't quite have a good finish. It kind of died off the first time through. That was not the case the second time through. Tasted much more balanced, much more like just, it was good. It was very good. So it moved into second. I want to tell you guys what I think my two favorites are before I actually like reveal the results. But I think my two favorites are Brook Lottie Classic Lottie and the Glendronic 12. But we'll see where they end up, I think. And I think I also, I think like McAllen 12 might also end up up there too. I like all of these. And I think these are great summer, easy sipping scotches. These are great choices. They're so good. So light, so airy, so rich, so flavorful. I mean that light and airy and rich and flavorful, like can be kind of contradictory, but they're not. They're delicious and these are great for the summer. So now, it is time to reveal the final results. Dum, dum, dum. Okay, so I have in last place, number one. Number one, which is not number one, it's just one. So let's look at it and see what it is. Glen Morangy, Morangy, Orangy, Morangy. You know what? It's still good. It still tastes delicious. And you know what? You can find these so much like you can find these nearly everywhere actually i think you can literally find these everywhere but glen morangy orangey glen morangy glen orangey because glen orange e glen orangey <laughs> orangey <laughs> you can find it at costco in a freaking ginormous bottle and it's good so go check out your local costco if you like glen morangy Okay, now moving on to fifth place, but not actually, fifth, the, none of these are like a place. I don't want to call them a place. Like these are just great. I just wanted to find out which one I like the best. I really want to know which one you like the best and if I chose that one. So moving on, number five, which is number four, four is Glenfiddich 12. Okay, so far we're doing good. My favorites are still in it. 
I mean, I still like these. I'm just curious to where they're gonna end up. Okay, Glenfinnick 12. Now, six is in fourth place. That's a lot, there's so many here. Okay, six. I had six higher up the first time through. Now I'm curious, I'm, I'm curious, I'm nervous. I'm quitting. I quit! Oh, shit. Dang it, you guys. Oh! Can we just stop this? I like it. I, this is my favorite one. Okay, you know what? No, it doesn't matter. This is still my favorite one. I'm still, like, this is still... Brooke Lottie, Classic Lottie. Okay. What the heck? You guys, I love the Classic Lottie. Dang it! Don't know how it ended up there, but I was definitely wrong. Okay, now... Moving on to third place. Holy shiz, I'm like already mind blown. Okay, third place is five. Oh, dang it. Glendronic 12, so I was wrong. What do I have, Holland Park and McAllen? That's actually kind of shocking, but Glendronic 12, okay. Now let's see Holland Park or McAllen finishes on top. I really like McAllen. I think that might be it. I don't know. Third, oh wait. Three and two. Okay, three is McAllen 12 double cask. That means first place, holy moly, is Highland Park 12. Crazy. That was crazy. I think if I was going to rank these, like I think we just did that ranking, but I think if I was going to rank these on my own without knowing, I would go Brook Lottie, Classic Lottie, Glendronic. I mean, that says, yeah, yeah. Glendronic, then McAllen, Highland Park, Glenfiddich, and Glenmorangie. Glenmorangie. Crazy enough, though, that's not how it ended up. These blinds are crazy as hell. You never know what you're going to get. I definitely have, I'm shocked. I really am. So, that was fun. I really want to know what your favorite is out of these easy sipping summer scotches. Let me know. Leave it in the comments. And as always, holy moly, I'm shocked. As always, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I will be back with so much more of The Average Drinker. I'm Dara, and I'll see you next time.